on the Retro Show today. You're Gen Z, right? I don't know. Speak and Spell is back. Can I use this at an arcade? Chicken let oh yes. cause Of course this is great. It's episode eight. Oh hello chip tips. Oh. Chip tips and chip tips. Oh hello. Welcome back to the, the Retro, Retro Show. Show. And of course, it is episode great eight. Eight. Uh, it is nice to see you again. You look great. I love what you've done with your hair. Yeah, which hair? Uh, the one on all the of their hair. Good. And speaking of which, you've gone from seven of nine to seven out of seven. Because <laughs> we don't call her Lady Fantastic for nothing. Wow. Yes. Hair today, blonde tomorrow, as they say. No, blonde yesterday, dark today. Yes. That. We'll play it in reverse. But speaking of which, it is time for some old news. That's old news. Yeah. Good to see. Apparently, I still have worms. <laughs> but first up in old news, this is a new Kickstarter for a video documentary celebrating 40 years of the ZX Spectrum. Um, obviously, very appropriate timing with Search Lives in Class Passing recently. And they reached out to Perifractic and Lady Fractic and Puppy Fractic. Well, they emailed Puppy Fractic. Oh, yeah. Asking if they could come and interview us about our experience with the ZX Spectrum and, and other Sinclair things, right? You, you find attic attack scary, I know. We don't have an attic. That joke went right over my head. It's <laughs> terrible. But so good as well. But it has already reached a number of stretch goals. Yeah you're, yeah, you're stretching your arms out, I know. It's going to be lots of fun and very interesting and educational, uh, apart from the bit with us in it, but you'll, you'll put up with that. Next, in old news, did you know about this? No, I didn't. Oh my gosh. The Dune screenplay was written in MS-DOS. Dune. Dune. It's not Doom. It's a different game. Dune. <laughs> Quite intimidated. Would you like me to uh, call it Dune? So this program can only hold 40 pages in memory. Here he is. This is Mr. Eric Roth, turning on his PC, loads up this program, Movie Master, and types away. So this script was actually written in 2018. He says he uses this, quote, it's half superstition and half fear of change. But he really, he needs to grow up a bit and, and not rely on all these old... We'll cut that later. Did you hear about this? I did, I just haven't actually seen it yet. So this is the new Nokia. The new old. Nokia. Nokia 6310. Nokia. Is it Nokia? Yeah. Neither of us are Norwegian. Is it Norwegian? I thought it was Japanese. Hey, where is the company Nokia from? An American now. Nokia was founded in Tampere. Tampere? Hey, where's Tampere? Tampere, Finland is by Finland, not close. I only know this because when we were inventing our snakebite joystick, (laughs) exhibit A, your honor. Uh, we had a meeting with Nokia in a li- oh, in their London head-, head offices. It actually clips on to the side of the old Nokia phones. There's like a big seam. There's a seam, but also there are two little holes if you've got an old Nokia yeah. that we use for the car holders. Ah, uh, yeah. So, so I used you- to have one of these. We use this for that. We use that for this. Anyway, nice to see it back and that it will feature Snake because this is called the Snake Bite Joystick. And we advertised it as allowing you to break the score barrier. Well, I mean, let's have a look. Has it got the little um, notches on the side? Or do we buenas have, notches. Do we have to say buenas notches to the notches? I'm going to say no. Love it. I mean, who clamps their phone into the car anymore? We just drive like this. Not yeah. in California. If you, unless, yeah, if you have Night Rider. It looks like it's thinner. Like, yeah. But it's not about the size. Yes, but if you were to clamp it, then I saw that. Then you would need the yeah. See, it's it's thinner. It's thinner, but still built to withstand everyday life. I don't know about that. Love it, trust it, keep it. Nokia. <laughs> Free advert. There. Next up, Games Master. Does this mean anything to you? No. So this is um, Patrick Moore. He was the computer avatar thing in the Games Master, which was a weekly gaming show on Channel Four. Like a money-winning. 
I don't know if you won money or just kudos, but um, it launched in January 1992, ran for seven seasons, and it was the first British show dedicated to gaming. It is now coming back. This is Trevor McDonald. Uh, what? <laughs> Trevor McDonald. Oh. So he, in our previous episode or two ago, he was um, Danny Glover from The Lethal Weapon <laughs> flashback. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So he's a, a very well-known British BBC News presenter. So Games Master's coming back. Um, here is a little trailer. Compete for honor. That's and Trevor McDonough talking. The golden joystick. Let's get sweaty. Indeed. So this will be back on November 21st on E4 and YouTube for all the American viewers. E4's YouTube channel. I've heard of YouTube. I... Mm. And now it's time for... I see what you mean. I'll see what you mean. Love a bit of dog rapping. And speaking of dogs. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, he came back. Wait, what kind of overalls does Mario wear? Denim, denim, denim. I'm not good at this I'm so sorry. We will, we'll try to get some professional writers in. Denim, dum 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 What are you doing now? Finishing the song. Don't you mean denim, dum dum denim, dum? No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it when it's just a painful thing and then you, they make it funny. Because I'm sure that was anything but funny for him. It's all Mario today. Yeah. <laughs> love it. And here's a meme that doesn't move. Oh no. But the cat's moved. Poor, poor kitty. You like cats, right? Mm -hmm. You like cats? The musical? All right, next. Did you know this? This isn't even a meme, really. I didn't know where to put this, but... That Mike Myers, Michael Myers, not Mike Myers, mask. That's another story. I keep making that mistake too. From the Halloween movies was originally Captain Kirk, William Shatner mask. Mm -hmm. You knew this? I did. Oh, yes. wow. But they cut the eye holes bigger, brushed out the hair, mm -hmm. and painted it white. Mm -hmm. And it's now, he's now terrifying. The Tibetan sand fox carries the same resting expression as a wife who has just heard her husband's latest 8 bit computer purchase. <laughs> That's really good. We're actually extremely supportive, partly because it's our, part of our career. I support his hobby and then he supports mine and it's, you know, it's usually nothing that breaks the bank. See, what, what are the female equivalents of guys buying things from their childhood? Oftentimes for the gentler sex, it is, um, you know, they've been sewing or embroidery or the cricket. Um, arts and crafts, I guess, is the... I just heard crickets. Not that one. But it is, it is interesting, I think. It's fair to say, in my experience, women don't carry the same kind of thing about nostalgia for items that they owned. Would you say that's true? So we do have the same nostalgia, like if you find an old, old doll. But the difference is, is that oftentimes boys' toys were more functional as opposed to girls toys which were more beautiful that would explain it actually so, so, so there's a purpose to reacquiring these whereas yes. some people have doll collections which is fair enough and doll collections you just kind of look at you can brush their hair there's there's specific smells to them so the nostalgia there's a mm. very particular smell of a 19 early 1990s barbie nostalgia and if any of you have sisters or older daughters you may be familiar with the smell it's it's very Specific. My sister's stink. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Interesting not the, discussion. The doll smell, not your sister. Oh, I, I, I kind of knew that. Um, dolls to zebras. Mm -hmm. What more can you say? Do you remember defragging? Yes. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. It was it was satisfying to know that you'd made the difference. But now the computers, they do everything for us. Well, not these. You can't even defrag these. They're too old. Last up, topically to what we were just saying. Oh Lady interests. Mm. Oh. Rude. <laughs> yes. Of course. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh. Do you know why Duncan and the shovel are, are together? I don't. Well, when Duncan acts up, he gets the shovel. I used to do some gardening. Yes. Well, I think that's enough of Duncan and his large shovel. Uh, we're going to move on to some fun boxings. Oh, 
So it is time for some fun boxing. But before we fun box uh, donations from other people, which incidentally will earn you an RR badge. <laughs> Can someone edit my hand? An RR badge. Go to perifractive.com slash submit to submit your donation ideas and other content for the show. But I thought we'd show this because we were shopping today at Target here mm -hmm. in America. And we found this. Speak and Spell is back. Would you like to do the honours? <laughs> very underwhelming. So you had a speak and spell as a kid? I did not have a speak and spell as a kid. Oh. My friend Danny did, and I remember so. spending a lot of time holding it and jamming the letters in because there was naturally a delay because of the speed of technology, but I just remember being like... Spell level A. Now try two, as in two wolves. Two wolves? Two wolves. Oh. T-W-O. <laughs> Smash. That is right. So are you aware that the voice is different? Or... Yeah. Okay. It's a shame. But the, the sounds are the same. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite part. It's a lot lighter, too, because I remember as a child it was oh, yeah. like a brick. Can you make the sounds? Spell. Spell. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and again. <laughs> Terrible. Let me try <laughs> You're trying? You want to try? Spell level A. Press go to begin. I'll press the keypad then. Spell once. Once. W U W U. And yes. Once. That is right. Very cool. Thank you. Speak and spell. That is right. Clearly, it is something Pac-Man related. Waka, 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 waka. Or do you know who makes I... that noise? Fozzy Bear? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Muppets. But why is that? I don't know. This is from Cook and Becker, Next Gen Art. <sighs> the birth of an icon. <laughs> As it's born from the book. Would you just take that? <laughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, don't correct me. I have been doing a lot of reading about... Uh, video games, and I read that Pac-Man was designed as a pizza looking for its slice. Like that makes sense. A slice. Yeah. So what does Pac stand for? Pizza and cheese. Coke. <laughs> Coke. Pizza it's and Coke. Coke. Ready? Mm -hmm. The birth of an icon again. <laughs> out, out of the... Okay. Your turn. What am I doing? There's a book inside of a oh. book. <laughs> Terrifying. There we go. No. I'm just kidding. So we have money. Can I use this at an arcade? Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> Another vinyl. I think. Yeah. Love it. This is Pac-Man Fever by Buckner and Garcia. Oh, and it's my favorite cover. Oh, wow. Well, I think we'll have to play out with this, won't we? Thank you so much, Cook and Becker. Cook and Kicker. Cook and Becker. What have we got? I have no idea. Oh. Commodore Music Maker Disc. Confirmed. Um, do you remember in my Music Maker video? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, baby. Love you. She said, oh, this is interesting. Um, probably the, it came from a dog household. Because she's chewing on the packaging. She can. Uh, I pointed out that the Music Maker, which I converted there into the CMM2 Red, only came with a cassette version of the software on cassette. I do remember that. This is the version on disc. Thank you so much, Richard Snelling, which explains why she was Snelling the package. Good girl. Awesome. Next up, your turn. From Peter Snelling. Snapka. No, I think it's obviously Peter. It's easy to pronounce. It says. That's Peter. Pure to... Is 
I know exactly what this is. <laughs> what? If you would just go in your bed, you wouldn't be in the line of fire. About two or three episodes ago on the retro show, <laughs> show we said, why is my Amiga haunted? Because it kept having um, keyboard issues whereby the caps lock key would flash randomly uh, for error codes that were not related to what was actually happening. This will actually do a full system diagnostic because I still haven't figured it out. Amiga diagram. Thank you, Peter, from Sordan.ie. Speaking of sponsors and things that go in PCBs, we have to recommend because we want to recommend because we actually we really think that they do make great quality PCBs. And they are, of course, PCB the way. other reason. <laughs> PCB way. Uh, the PCB started just five bucks, whether you're building a brand new Amiga 500 from the newly created PCB layouts that are available online, or some kind of device to keep your dog on her bed. We do recommend PCB Way. And as we all know, PCB stands for printed... No, 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 no. Puppy. Paw. Can. Can. Boop. Boop, here comes. What are you doing over there? You're breaking the fourth wall. Puppy Fractic cannot behave. Puppy Fractic can bed. <laughs> okay, she wants to watch from there and that's just okay. Next up and finally for fun boxing. Feels like giving birth again. Not that I've ever given birth before. Uh, ah, ooh, me. I sound like Homer Simpson. Ooh, keyboards. This is the Air 75 mm -hmm. ultra thin design. Um, it's a battery powered mechanical keyboard, I want to say. It is low profile mechanical switches. It says it right there. Oh, hello. Oh, there's a lady. Why don't you unpackage this and fast forward while I unpackage this and fast forward. <laughs> so you get half the keys in one, half in another. Choice of colors you can swap out. Mm. How's it feel? Nice. Her Frank Spencer. So they offered us this as a donation and I thought it might be something we could possibly install a Mister inside or a BMC64, which is basically a little Commodore 64 program that runs on a Raspberry Pi. But it runs in native mode, so you don't have to boot the whole Raspberry Pi boot sequence first. It will boot the Pi straight into Commodore 64. And we love Pi. Thank you so much, Nufi. And oh, got stickers. Very cool. This um, font reminds me of Nutella. Because it's red and... Nah. All right, now, what's coming up next, Lady Fractic? Coming up next, Fairy Fractic, is a quick bites of Gen X versus Gen Z. When I, as a Gen X, ask Gen Z, do you know what this is? I see what you don't know what it is. You'll see what I mean. Who's, is there a special guest? Special guest is our resident Gen Zer, Josie Fractic. She resident? Uh, she lives in the attic. Oh. All right, let's check it out. Not the attic, the segment. Welcome. Hey, Chip Dippers, on today's Quick Bites, we are going to see Gen X versus Gen Z and see what Josie Fractic recognizes and what she thinks of items from Gen X. Are you ready? Ready. Tell me what this is. Okay, I wanna say that is a floppy disk. Mm -hmm. And what is it used for? I think storing information, kind of like an SD card. How big are they? Okay, so I think the middle one is about this big. The orange one? The orange one is about this big. The blue one is maybe like this and the black one is like that. Or the blue one is like this. <laughs> the orange one's like this and then the black one is freaking gigantic. So yes. These are floppy disks. I was right. Yes. Okay. The sizes are eight inches. For the big one? Yes. Okay. Big. Okay. This one is five and a quarter. Mm -hmm. okay. And then this is a three and a half. Yay! So, whose logo is that? I have no clue. If you had to guess, like, what does it look like? Um, it looks like an evil smiley face <laughs> turned sideways. So I'm going to guess this is by some, this is an evil corporation. <laughs> I mean, which ones aren't? <laughs> This is the Commodore Chicken Lips logo. Now I know. As you can see, it has. Mm -hmm. There's also one right there. That one is upside down. That's okay. Okay, wow. Yeah. I feel really so very competent. What is this? <laughs> Looks like Acid Cat from The Good Place. <laughs> 
It was a program. Okay. Can you guess what kind of a program it was? One of the computer variety. Yes. <laughs> uh, an audio program? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is Napster. Have you ever heard of Napster? No. Napster was a program where you could pirate music. I did a lot of that. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? That's not perifractic. That is not perifractic. It's not puppy fractic either. Guess what his name is. John? Well, oh, no. close. Uh, I'm gonna name him Jordan. This is Tom from MySpace. Did you ever have a MySpace? No, I was too young. When you joined MySpace, you started with one friend. Mm -hmm. And you were already friends with Tom from MySpace. Oh. Whose logo is that? Atari? Yes, and how do you know that? From this! <laughs> yeah. From watching these videos. Yes, well done. Thank you. What does Atari do? <laughs> what do they do? Is it a game? Either a computer company that makes computer... It's a game, right? It's a game. They make games. No. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> An Atari 400? You just read it off the wall? No. Okay. You didn't know you Yay. were correct, but you, she was correct. Oh, okay. What are these? VHS tape. What did you watch on these? Movies. Disney movies. Yeah. 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 Like, I'll, like the Tigger movie. What? Cinderella. I know that one. Yeah, you've never seen the Tigger movie? That was one of my favorites when I was really little. What is this? A Nintendo Blaster for a game that you play. What console was this used on? Nintendo something. I only, know, I only know of a Switch. No, wait, no, a DS? No. A little further back. I don't know what's further back than a DS. We worked on this. <laughs> this is the Nintendo Entertainment, Entertainment System. System. It is, there was a game called Duck Hunt where you shot ducks with the gun. <laughs> And when you missed, a really rude dog would come up and go What is this noise? 15, 7, messages. <laughs> Message, 1. Rain. I have no clue. I know this is Seinfeld. Hey Kramer, when was it this you were having sacks to my house oh. every 30 seconds? Well, I, I signed up for a food delivery service. You can pick them up right now? You need a fax machine in order to receive the faxes. If you don't have a fax machine hooked up to that phone line, mm -hmm. that's what would happen. Well, from the two of us, back to you, Perry Fractic. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I see what you mean, you could call it. You said what I... Indeed. Gen Z. That's, <laughs> anyway, but it is now time for homebrews. That's homebrews. That's homebrews. And first up, we have Falk Heinzelman, and he says this is our museum on a cart, a tiny recreation of our real museum, the Digital Retro Park in Offenbach, near Frankfurt, Germany. I should point out that if you do submit content at perifractive.com slash submit, submit, and we use it in the show, and the badge affords you free entry to a number of retro museums. This is true. Which means the digital retro park, we should actually be talking about getting you on that list. Don't know why you aren't already. Yeah. But here it is, the little cart. That's cute. Now here's how it looks. Press start. Go English for this one. Uh, you can be... I'll be Sandy. Okay. I love this style of game, don't yeah. you? It's so cute. Reminds me of Pokemon or Legends of Zelda. It's very much like Zelda, yeah. Um, and Falk says in order to raise some money to survive the COVID crisis, he created this little game. And he's selling physical copies through his website, digitalretropark.net. Look at all the little machines in, in the museum. That's so cool. Got a Mega Drive there. What, what's that? PC Engine? Appropriately. Beautiful work, Falk. Fantastic. Next up, we have <laughs> some music that we might have to edit out. If anyone's wondering, it is Duel of the Fates. The lighting oh. is so much different. It's so, so, so different. So this is Peter Gomberg's updated Commodore 64 VR application. Puts you in a room with 80s decor where you will find a Commodore 64 on the desk with a 1702 monitor and a 1541 floppy disk drive. And you can use your own ROMs to boot up the Commodore 64. And it makes me wonder why did I build this real museum when we could have done it all in VR? Yeah. 
Excellent yes. work, Peter. Next up, we have Andy from Southampton, who's been washing. Uh, he's been working on a project to fit a Mr. FPGA D10 Nano. We were talking about the Mr. just now, we possibly did. putting it in that keyboard, but he's put it in an Amiga 500 case. The project's now complete, bar a few minor tweaks. So you can see how the USB ports all line up at the back there. Yeah. Primarily, it is an Amiga running an FPGA, but its party trick is it can be any other machine because the Mr. allows you to put any core inside the FPGA of other machines too. Like an Apple core? Yeah, exactly. He's included DB9 joystick adapters. Mm. Ta-da! <coughs> Thank you, Andy from Southampton. And finally, we have Gareth Aldred. But he is not all dread because he's created Pickaxe Pete. There is Pete himself. As you can see, he has a lovely haircut and likes spreading his legs. Um, Pickaxe Pete, he said that ever since having a C64 as a child, he had the urge to write his own game. He finally fulfilled that dream this year using the excellent Turbo Rascal. Hmm. <laughs> I say Rascal, it's, it's Rascal. How would you say that? The rascal. Yeah, but of course there's the programming language Pascal, so I always read it as Rascal. Now, how about a nice delicious bowl of nostalgia flakes? Hmm. And just a couple of nostalgia flakes this time, or maybe a couple of bowls. A small now, bowl. A small bowl. Um, first up, we have a video from one of our patrons, Alan Edwards. Uh, if you want to support the channel, take a look at perifractive.com slash support. But he sent in this lovely video of Maisie, who's six on the right, and Ruben, who's four, uh, enjoying pinball dreams like Dad did in his youth on the Amiga 500 after they gave it its lockdown dust off Aww. and uh, refurb. I like after... that they're playing together. Yeah. Well, it's quite cute, so watch this. Why, why the bulky go on Maisie's side? What's a bulky going on Maisie's side? Sorry, Ruben. Yeah, the ball uh, does sometimes hang to the right. Rephrase that later. That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the, that's the saying I was going for. Right. From Richard Lectroid, here's a couple of photos from somewhere near the start of his musical journey, pictured here with his bread bin C64 mm. and the Commodore Expander keyboard. Look at that setup. So cool. He is cool. Yeah. Now, he says over the decades that followed, he's written and released a plethora of music in the industry. Plethora. Plethora. The plethora. It's like thesaurus. You don't say thesaurus. Get the it plethora. right. Plethora. Get it right, Lady Fertig. But it all started in the 80s on the Commodore 64. And that wraps it up for Nostalgia Flakes. We are all full. And it's nice of you to join us back from your bed. She's a good girl. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, but a tickle of a dog hair in my nose. Huh? Hope it's a dog hair to talk to Duncan again, otherwise. Anyway, that's the end he of our show. He seems pretty hairless, but yeah. He will be when I'm finished with him. You're going to shave him. <laughs> I'm going to punch the hair off his head. <laughs> that's not how hair works or punches. You haven't seen me punch Duncan yet. This has gone way off tangent. We were talking about beautiful nostalgic things. Yeah. And puppies. Oh, and her butt. So that means it is time for us to say... Thanks for watching, subscribe and support below, and cheerio! Cheerio! <laughs> Bye! Bye!